Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to focus on designing controllers using the root locus approach. When we indeed can't satisfy all the requirements using a proportional controller. That's something that we, we had observed in the previous video lecture indeed. So first of all, we are going to improve the steady state error. Okay. So our aim would be to improve the steady state error. We assume that we are okay with the transient requirements. So transient requirements are satisfied or could be satisfied with a proportional controller, but the steady state requirements are not or couldn't be satisfied using a proportional controller. In this case, we will improve our controller by introducing a PI or a lag compensator. Let's first have a look at the PI controller. Over here, you can see the structure of a PI controller. It indeed consists of two segments or two parts. The first part is a proportional controller, basically. And the second one is an kind of integrator with the gain. Okay, so we have K2 over S and we have K1. Both of them receive the same error signal. So E is here, which is provided to both of them. They are in parallel and their outputs are being added to each other with a positive sign. And then we have the input to the plant. Okay. So if you write down the expression for the input to the plant, which comes from the proportional integral or PI controller that we have, in the time domain it will be in this form. So we will have KP times E of T. KP is the gain for the proportional part, plus KI times integral of error over the time starting from 0 till T. Or in the S domain, we can write it as U of S is equal to KP plus KI over S times E of S. So here we have KP and we have KI, the gain for the integrator. Therefore, the transfer function for the controller, GC of S, which is U over E, will be equal to KP times S plus KI over S, or it could be rewritten in the form of K times S plus CC over S, where K is equal to KP and ZC is equal to KI over KP. Looking at the controller, we can see that there will be a pole at the origin. So there will be one pole at the origin for the controller and there will be a zero at minus ZC or minus KI over KP. Minus KI over KP. And now if we assume that KP is fixed, if we, if we assign a fixed value for KP, by changing the value of KI, the location of the zero will change. If we lower the value of KI, if KI becomes smaller, minus KI over KP will become smaller as well, and then the zero will move towards the origin. If we increase the value of KI, then the zero will go far from the origin. It's also good to keep in mind that if we have the initial value of, of the error, as e at 0, then u at 0 will be equal to kp times e at 0, because the integrator part will be 0, because we, we integrated from 0 to 0. Okay, But then from time 0, the PI controller will start taking into account the integral of the error. So if you have a constant error, let's say, over time the integral of that constant error will increase without bound, okay? And in practice, then it will considerably increase the control amplitude if the error doesn't decrease quickly enough, okay? So if 
error doesn't uh, get smaller, then the integral of the error over time will get bigger. And as this element of the control signal becomes bigger, the whole control signal will become big. And if there is no saturation on u of t, in the ideal case indeed, of course in the practice there is there is saturation and the, this control signal cannot increase without bond. But in the ideal case when there is no saturation present, a constant error e of t will lead to an infinite increase of u of t. And you can see that the, why the PI controller is not a bi-boy stable system. Yeah? Because for the PI controller, we have a pole right at the origin with the real value equal to zero and the zero somewhere. Indeed, you can say also that the integral action will never give up until the error is steered back to zero. Okay, now let's check out some benefits of having such a controller using the root locus approach. Let's uh, start with an example. We assume that we have a proportional controller that doesn't allow us to achieve a desired steady state error. So let's assume that this is G, G of S is our plant with three poles here and there. With a proportional controller, if we draw the root locus plot for the system, by setting a proper value for K, we have the closed pole over here at the point A. And with that, we are satisfying transient requirements but not the steady state requirements. So we need to improve the steady state requirements. As a natural step, we can insert a pole at the origin in the controller. And then the, 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 the behavior of the system in terms of the steady state error will improve quite a lot yeah, because we are going to increase the type of the system. If we add one integrator, the type of the system will be, if it was originally zero as we have for this case, for this example, it will become type one and then the steady state error of the system will improve. However, if we introduce the pole over here, you can see that the resulting root locus for the system with the controller with the pole at the origin will change. And now the point A is no longer on our root locus, so we can't indeed satisfy the transient requirements anymore. By in the introduction of the pole at the origin, we have improved the steady state error, its steady state behavior of the system. But at the same time, the root locus of the system has changed quite a lot such that we can place the poles of the closed loop system at the point A and satisfy the, the transient indeed requirements. In order to satisfy the transient requirements as well, <coughs> the approach that we take would be to place a zero nearby the pole of the controller. So let me maybe draw it here. So we had three poles over here. And then the original root locus was like this. And now when we want to introduce the pole over here, in order to keep the root locus of the system kind of unchanged, we are going to introduce a zero nearby, because if we do so, the root locus will remain almost the same, especially regarding the point, the test point that we had as point A, and I assume that it was over here. Now let's see why this is the case. If the point A is over there, 
It means that initially for the original system for g of s or for let's say for l of s in the form of k p times g of s at the point a the phase condition was satisfied phase of n over d was equal to 2h plus 1 times pi assuming that we are working on the positive locus and phase of n over d was equal to we have no zeros therefore we had minus phase of d equal to 2h plus 1 times pi and for that we could say that we had if we had these three poles from each one of them we had theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 so minus theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is equal to 2h plus 1 times pi at the test point a this is what we had for the original system now with the introduction of the pole and zero of the controller l of s will look like as k times s plus zc over s times g of s and if we want to have point a on the root locus the phase condition should apply again phase of n over d should be equal to 2h plus 1 times pi now for the new system phase of n over d will include two new new angles i call this theta c and this one phi c phase of n will be equal to phi c minus we will have theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 plus theta c equal to 2h plus 1 times pi. And then I can rewrite this in this form phi c minus theta c minus theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is equal to 2h plus 1 times pi. And if we want to, if we compare these two with each other in it, the equations that we have over here, and if you want to have point A on the root locus, we would need to have phi C minus theta C being equal to zero. This is the ideal case, but which should never happen uh, because in that case, phi C will be equal to theta C and then we will have pole and zero at the pole, at the origin boss. Pole and zero at the same place. But we, we don't want to do that yet, otherwise the pole and zero will cancel each other in the best case scenario if, if the system doesn't indeed, uh, let's say, if we place the pole right on the, the zero, their effect, at least in terms of the calculations, in terms of the theory, will be uh, cancelled out. So that's something that we don't want, but we can, on the other hand, make this phi c minus theta c quite small. If we can make it a quite small value, then the point A, if the point A doesn't belong to our locus, some point nearby, like B or C, will belong to our locus, and with that we might still be able to satisfy the transient requirements. So our aim in designing the PI controller would be to make this phi c minus theta c as small as possible. And that means that our zc, the, the place in which we place the pole, and it was equal to minus ki over kp, should be quite small. This should be close to the origin. close to the origin. So if we place the zero of the controller close, closer to the origin, then the root locus that we end up with will be similar to the original case. And then the transient requirements might be, could be indeed satisfied. So that's something that we, we have just discussed over already here. I guess for this video, that's all. We will go through the example in the next video. I don't want to make this video, let's say, quite long. So to summarize, 
with the PI controller, we have the following properties. First of all, PI could be written in the form of K times S plus ZC over S, which has one pole at the origin and the zero on the left half plane. The second note would be that with PI, type of system increases. And as the type of the system increases, its behavior in terms of the steady state error will be, will be improved as well. The next thing is that to keep the root locus similar to the original one, and therefore satisfy the transient requirements, zero of the PI should be placed close to the origin. But as we will see later, we cannot put it too close to the origin because then there will be some, some other side effects. And we will study it in the next videos. All right. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in another video soon.